If you've been on Twitter recently, you may be seeing a few memes floating around. Most notably, the Big Toblerone meme, where a dark-skinned, pink-haired anime fellow is holding a jumbo-sized Toblerone. With a little research, I found out that this is from Neo Yokio, a new Netflix series created by Vampire Weekend frontman Ezra Koenig and starring Jaden Smith, the living, breathing meme. With a little more research, I also found out that this show might be bad. But then I thought, well, wait a minute. I saw a lot of really funny videos of this show on the internet. You know, it made the show look pretty decent. There's a lot of little funny memes popping up about this show, so can it really be that bad? Now, I usually don't put much stake into reviews until I've seen the final product for myself. You know, some of my favorite movies and shows initially got really bad reviews because some people just don't get it, you know? But then I went ahead and watched the show and... Guys, it fucking sucks. I'm sorry, this show's awful. I'm not even gonna get too in-depth here. Okay, I'm gonna try to make sure that this does not become a 20-minute review. So we're gonna go ahead and call this one a... Quickie! All right, so here's how this show goes. Neo Yokio is set in a fictionalized version of New York. It's kind of supposed to be New York and Tokyo, but there aren't any elements of Tokyo shown here, so we're not gonna worry about that. It's basically just bougie, futuristic New York, with a capital B on bougie. The premise is that Neo Yokio is so fancy and high class that it attracts demons to it. And then a group of demon hunters and exorcists are brought in to live in the city. And the main character Kaz, played by Jaden Smith, is a descendant of one of these ancient wizards. So the show starts off with this tourism video that explains all of this. And initially you might think, hey, this is actually pretty cool. This is interesting. I'm into this premise. Five minutes later, it's going to dawn on you. Holy shit, this show's fucking boring. Now, I don't like throwing that word around very often. I think that being boring is completely subjective. As you all know, if I'm gonna call something boring, I like to give a concrete reason for saying so. So what's the problem with this show? Well, it doesn't try. And that's pretty vague, I understand, so I'm gonna explain. But first, I think it's important to try and find out what the intent of this show is. What's the point? Every good story has a point to it, even the ones that seem nonsensical. BoJack Horseman is a black comedy which aims to tell darker and more personal stories under the guise of being an animated sitcom. Personally, I'm not even a huge fan of this show. It's a little too depressing for me. But I can acknowledge its strengths. Airplane is an over-the-top parody of various disaster movie tropes. Even when something is crazy, absurdist comedy, it still has a point. So, what's the point of Neo Yokio? I really have no fucking clue. Now initially, I'm tempted to say that it's a social commentary on vanity or capitalism, but it isn't. There are a lot of hack reviewers out there who claim to find deeper meaning in this show, that it's some sort of brilliant postmodern commentary, but I'm telling you, that's reaching pretty fucking far. The main character is this vain, selfish, misogynistic, and overall, awful person. He's obsessed with material possessions and he thinks that wealth and status are the most important virtues to live by. But the show never comments on how he's wrong or how he's kind of a bad person. There's never the thread connecting these themes. There's another character who comments on how wrong he is every once in a while, but it never really gets any further than that. I'm done searching for meaning in the aesthetic cycles of commodities. Fashion is not a commodity. If we're being honest, this commentary is pretty shallow. But isn't that kind of weird to have a main character who's such a bad person but doesn't realize it? What if I told you the people who made him don't understand how bad he is? Because that's what happened. I've been reading some of Ezra Koenig's interviews to see exactly what the fuck the point of this show was, and he says that the show is a celebration of these elements. He calls it a loving tribute. And then I read another interview where Ezra and Jaden talk about how Kaz is just a blend of both of their characteristics. That's why the show doesn't tell you all these horrible traits are a bad thing, because the people who made it don't think that this is a bad person. If you ask me, that's a little fucked up. In one episode, Kaz's robot butler is trying to get an opportunity to charge his battery. Kaz continuously pushes the butler aside and ignores his wishes, and throughout the episode, you're met with the reminder that the robot's battery is dying. You're led to believe that Kaz's selfish nature might prove to have some negative outcome. But what happens once the battery dies at the end of the episode? Nothing happens. Kaz just takes the bus home. As a viewer, you are left truly disconnected to this world and these characters because the themes are so poorly developed. It feels like everything is setting up to be a commentary on something. But then the show just ends, and you realize that nothing of value was said at all. 
Okay, so we can go ahead and cross that off. It's not a social commentary. So next thing, what about an action show about hunting demons? I mean, there's a little bit of demon hunting in episode one and two, but that's kind of it. The show never tries to tell a story about these demonic forces. It loses that plot pretty early on. In fact, you start to forget that Kaz can even shoot lightning and fucking fly because he doesn't do it past episode two. I'm gonna get into episode two in a little bit, but overall, this is not an action show. It's not a supernatural thriller or anything, so we're gonna cross that off. That was pretty obvious. Next, what about this show being a parody of anime? I read some reviews where people thought this show was supposed to lampoon traditional anime tropes. Well, no, it doesn't do that either. Panty and Stocking is a parody of anime tropes, and whether you like it or not, that's kind of the main goal of that show, and you can see it in every episode. This show isn't even close to that. This show never tries to be a parody of anime tropes because it's clear that the extent of the creator's knowledge of anime is limited to colored hair and the occasional pointless exaggerated facial expression. There's a blue-haired girl with an exaggerated southern accent, but the joke isn't that she has blue hair and a stupid voice, it's that she's an opera singer with a stupid voice. If you thought the joke here was to parody anime, I'm sorry, but you're wrong. And guess what? I'm not lying because Ezra Koenig literally said in another interview that she has blue hair because Katy Perry had blue hair one time. And she has a southern accent because Miley Cyrus has a southern accent. The creator of the series is literally admitting that he has no deeper meaning behind any of this. Anyway, the influence of anime stops at the art style, so we're gonna go ahead and cross that off too. This is not a parody of anime. Now there's one more thing that this show could possibly be considered, and it was the one thing that I thought it was going to be when I started it, and that's a comedy. I know that's a broad category, but honestly, it's the last thing we've got. So is it a comedy? Well, no, it's not, because it's not actually funny. Believe me, I know that's a subjective thing to say, but it all goes back to what I originally said. The show does not try. This show rarely tries to tell any jokes or utilize any clever or funny writing. The exception to this rule is episode two. Episode two is the only remotely entertaining episode in the whole show. All right, gentlemen, let's go take a jog around the reservoir. Peace. It honestly feels like this all happened on accident too. I learned that all of these videos and memes that I saw before this show are all from episode two, because none of the other episodes are funny at all. Not because the jokes fall flat, but because there aren't any jokes at all. It's disappointing because episode two is full of genuinely funny moments. Oh, I'm sure she'd love that. I'll bring her a big Toblerone. How thoughtful. Honey, the snacks are ready. Kaz, I gotta go. Snacks are ready. There are moments in this episode where I legitimately laughed out loud, and it's disappointing that the show isn't good enough to recreate this past the second episode. Kaz Khan, the Midnight Blue Dawn. Oh, Archangelo, what, do you live here? I wish I lived here. There are six episodes in this show, and if I'm being generous, I'd say that episode one is boring, unfunny, and uninteresting. Episode two is actually funny and has some clever writing, and then every episode after that, might have one funny moment in them each. Gucci, Cartier, Ralph Lauren, you know they have cafe now? Ralph make pastries. <sighs> of course I know Ralph makes pastries. So if we count that up, the whole show runs around about 130 minutes probably, and the comedic moments take around 30 minutes of that. So you're left with 100 minutes of scenes like this. Oh, running with my ex-girlfriend and my uncle's funeral the same day? Good Lord, I need a drink. Shall I prepare you a cocktail, sir? We should go to Lexi and Gottlieb's new bar. You know I'm a partial investor. I'm sure it will pay dividends, sir. Let's swing by on the way to the Hamptons. Very good. Yeah, I'm not kidding, guys. That's the average scene from Neo Yokio. It's people just fucking sitting around, talking and being bougie, and there's just no connection with the audience. If you try and tell me, oh, well, the point isn't that it's supposed to be funny, well, then what is the point? I mean it, tell me what the point is. If anyone tries to tell me this is a postmodern social commentary without outlining any legitimate examples, then I have news for you. It fails at that. And guess what? When the creator of the show says it isn't a postmodern critique, then maybe it isn't. Guys, maybe you're probably reaching a little too far. There's no overall plot or story either. I should probably mention that, but if I tried to explain the story, I'd be here all fucking day because there isn't a story. There's no plot. I'd just be trying to interpret something that isn't there. 
There's no character development. There is nothing. There's absolutely nothing happening here. It's hard for me to talk about something that achieves nothing. I usually use examples from the media that I review in order to illustrate my points, but to be honest, the show is so empty that I can't find anything else to talk about. So what is this show? It's not a demon hunting action show, it's not a social commentary, it's not a parody, and it's not a comedy. I mean, I could also mention how the animation is quite possibly among the worst animation that I've ever seen in my life, but that's honestly just icing on the cake. I can without a doubt say that this show is truly and utterly worthless. Just save yourself the time and don't watch this show. You can watch episode 2, but if you try to do more than that, you're just gonna end up dissatisfied. I got the feeling watching this that Ezra Koenig probably didn't care that much when he made it. He probably just wanted to make an anime for the hell of it. I'm not even making an educated guess. If you read any of the interviews that I've mentioned, you'll understand that this show was not made with any heart. He just kind of did whatever he felt like it and didn't really care. There's a difference between a passion project and a vanity project. And most of the time, you should not view a vanity project with any respect. It doesn't matter if there's a moderately funny line every 30 minutes or one episode that I actually liked out of the whole batch. If the series still has no heart or effort aside from those things, then it's just pure garbage. Congratulations, Neo Yokio. You have won my prestigious award, the worst show that I've seen all year. Fuck this.